Would you like a list of all the things you need to do to be the best Agile coach you can be? Well, that's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, my friends, all you badass Agilists out there. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. So wonderful to see you. Listen, I don't pretend to know everything about being a great coach, and I don't pretend to be a great coach. But I do strive every day to be a little bit better, to be more and more effective, and to hit home runs for my customers. So I want to share with you today five things that I think you can try to apply to your coaching game that might just make you a little bit better, or at least a little bit different, than you were yesterday. Before we do that, let's remember why we're here, to create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and unstoppable force in this industry. And hey, if this show helps you, please tell your friends. Don't forget, you can reach out with your coaching questions at contact at badassagile.com. You can also head on over to the website to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Well, you know, in the past five or 10 years even, the job of Agile Coach has suddenly become a thing. And as things become a thing and become more popular, more and more people gravitate towards the profession and they start poking around and see what's what. When they do that, they want to find out what they can do to become the best coach they can be. So they might start seeking certifications, they might start seeking mentors, they might start reading books, and all of those things are good things. But if I can give you a couple of shortcuts today, some things that might help really improve your career, your presence, and most importantly, your effectiveness as a coach, then that's what I'd like to do with our time together today. In reality, there's only so many books you can read. There's only so much competence that you need in Scrum or Agile or any of the associated methods in order to be effective. And you can study that stuff up and down, and that's great. It's wonderful to have tools in your toolkit. But ultimately, as you know, I don't focus so much on the procedures, but more on the kind of leader you have to become. So let's focus on a couple of qualities I want you to work on. The first one is confidence. You need to be sure in order to lead. And it's not something you can fake easily. And if you're new, you might be wondering, how can you build confidence if you don't already have it? And the answer is pretty simple from my perspective, and that's be intentional about how you show up. The first step is to be careful about the words that you choose and use. So begin by limiting the number of times in a day you use words like maybe and um and I guess and swap them out not for more confident terms, meaning I know what I'm talking about when I really don't, but confident in terms of I may not know what I'm talking about, but I am willing to take a risk and find out. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, we've got two options in front of us, option A and option B, which way do you think we should go? If your instinct is to turn back and say, I don't know, which way do you think we should go? Experiment with something like this. I have an idea. Why don't we try option A or why don't we try option C? See where it takes us. And if we don't like the results we're getting, we can turn back and try a different option. You have to remember that confidence is something you build over time by doing what? By doing, by experiencing. Confidence refers to your inner certainty that you can succeed in a given scenario. And that kind of certainty comes from, as we know, experience. So until you've had the experience, it's really hard to build confidence. But you can still think like a confident person does. And what Agile would teach us about that is to experiment, measure, inspect, and adapt. So allow your confidence to come from a place of willing to walk into the unknown. It's actually less about appearing or being certain, but rather your willingness to get certain by doing. So avoid unconfident language, postures, and actions, and replace them not with actions and words of certainty, but actions and words of curiosity and willingness to try. 
Trust me, people are dying for somebody to follow. And if you appear confident and certain, or at least willing to take a risk, the person that they'll follow could be you. Okay, next thing you should get good at is storytelling. I've said this a million times, but if you don't have a practice of writing down your lessons learned every day, start one now. Not only should you write it down every day, but you should review it. When you review it weekly, look for consistencies, look for repetition, look for stories that are calling out to be told, look for metaphors that start to emerge, and build a collection and then put them into practice. So if you had something happen with a team today, And at the end of that interaction, you were able to break ground. You were able to convince somebody. You were able to get people to take a risk, to try and experiment. You were able to get people to open up. Mark that down. What did you do? What did you say? When did it start to go bad? And when did it start to turn around and become good again? What did you learn from that? Those things are gold. As a leader, your ability to take your lessons learned and perform alchemy whenever you need it is what creates a great leader of teams. And as you write down your observations, you may notice that certain stories will emerge or appear to you. You can make those accounts completely fictional, completely non-fictional, or anywhere in between. But finding a way to tell a story in such a way that it stirs emotion in people, because remember, nobody ever changes their mind based on logic and reason. Everybody changes their mind because of the way they feel about a certain person or event. And your job as a leader is to inspire that emotional change. And the best way to do that is with emotionally compelling stories. But you're never going to find them if all you do is read the great works of others. Be your own great work. Write down everything that you do and everything that happens to you and your team. The next thing you should get good at is knowing your gaps. This requires introspection. This requires reflection, and it requires honesty and vulnerability. Get good at writing down at the same time you write down your lessons learned today. Write down one thing that you could do or should do differently. Now look, you don't have to call the events of today a failure. You can call them a learning opportunity. You can call them an opportunity to get better, to stretch, to grow. Because that's exactly what it is. Hey, if you're still alive and thriving tomorrow... Today was no real failure. So make a practice of looking at the things that happen, even the bad things, as a chance to improve yourself. I love the idea of fighting for every last scrap of blame, which means in situations where you weren't necessarily to blame, that is to say you weren't accountable directly for a given sequence of events or outcomes, you still look for ways where you could have made a difference, where you could have prevented failure where you could have created a different outcome. That is a hugely valuable exercise, and most people don't have the courage to do it. Now, the inverse of knowing your gaps is knowing your value. What is it that you are uniquely qualified to do? I speak frequently about vision, service, and voice. That means know the change that you want to make in the world. Know the value that you want to add. Figure out who you serve, how you serve them, and why. And most importantly, figure out how you are uniquely qualified to deliver that message and that value. What is it about you? So I'll give you an example. I love leading people into change. I believe in making the world a better place by empowering and inspiring individuals. But my specific value is finding those people who came up in corporate North America sitting in the team rooms and the coding rooms, all of a sudden being handed this agile challenge, being asked to lead without any training or qualification in leadership. I wanted to speak to those people specifically. That's my language. That's my unique voice. And I didn't want to teach them leadership by teaching them agile. I wanted to teach them the qualities of exceptional human beings. Knowing that Agile principles would flow freely and naturally from that space. So what is your voice? What is your unique value? As always, and this is nothing new if you've been a long-time listener, spend time honing, crafting, and sharpening your vision, your service, and your voice. And the fifth thing that I would suggest if you want to become a great Agile leader is learn how to learn quickly. One of the most important things I realized early on 
is that complexity is the enemy. Most great ideas are inherently simple. There's an entire industry that profits from making them complex. But look for the simple, natural things in every new piece of information. Most of what humans create models or reflects the natural universe in some way. There's nothing truly innovative or completely mind-blowing out there. So as you dig into so-called complex concepts like scaling agile, overcoming mindset resistance, or even just techniques for bringing out the best in your team, as you're sitting there chewing over that 400-page book on that subject, look for the simple. Look for a way to relate this back to things that you already know. Find a way to boil this down to its essentials. I use book summarization services for exactly this reason. Tell me what is the most important nugget of information that I need to absorb and act upon. The quicker you learn and absorb, the quicker you can experiment and move towards excellence. So those are the five things that I want you to try this week. And then reflect on how that changes or hopefully improves your leadership game as an Agile coach or a Scrum Master. Try them out let me know. Folks, thank you for listening. You can reach out at worldwideweb.badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. Thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.